Casanova Productions is a local film production company. Uh, I, I've been working with them for about six months now. Uh, the two principals are Sandy Cunningham and Paul Williams, uh, both both incredibly talented business people, and uh, willing to take a uh, willing to take a strong interest in doing film in the Texas area. My partner Sandy Cunningham and I are excited about it, and I uh, look forward to doing this short film and then uh, turn it into a feature. So we're excited about the whole deal, and Rick Boyd's doing a fantastic job, and David and everybody else. So really excited about it. Happy to be involved and get this done and make some more, as long as everybody does it right. <laughs> I am a producer of Blue Tears, uh, co-owner of Driftwood Holdings, which owns Casanova Island Entertainment. Yeah, my relationship with Paul's, we met a year ago, and uh, that's about all I can say. My primary role in most companies or activities that we do is strictly financial. So I handle all the detail, the accounting, the organization, the operation of things. Um, they, they came to me with the idea that we can do films locally. And um, their attitude and mine is that we can do our productions just as well as anything that comes from Hollywood or any of the traditional production centers. So um, that's where Casanova came from. And uh, Blue Tears is... Um, an interesting concept. Uh, I think the the writer David Karen kind of hatched it in, in, in a couple of sessions that he and I went through as we were trying to come up with an idea for a short. And, uh, in that fertile, fevered mind of David's, just kind of exploded into existence. And this project is this is the beginning of another feature, which I'm. Ryan directing Paul Blue Tears. And the inspiration for this was I I had read about this drug lab. They had all these a whole bunch of weird people working there, like they're normal people working in drug labs. And they had women, it was like a factory. In one area they were naked girls, they're naked because they don't want them to steal the drugs and they were packaging cocaine. In another area there'd be girls packaging pills. There was R&D, uh, research and development in another part of the lab where they were making uh, synthetic designer drugs. And I was thinking about all that. I was thinking uh, what kind of person would be a chemist in a place like this? Well, you wouldn't just have an ordinary drug user. You would have to be a pretty educated, experienced, professional person who really knows his chemistry to do this job. What could lead someone to doing something like this? What would put him in that position to work in the last place in the world he probably started out to do when he began his career was work in a drug lab like this. And then I, I always tend to think I like fantastical, I like science fiction, I like playing with time and space and stories. And I like using that for emotional reasons as well. In the course of thinking about that, I thought, well, what if this lab had a history? As bad as this place is now, what if it had been worse? What if it had been even worse in the past? And then I thought, I know, actually part of the inspiration for this was I know some very good actors here, African-American actors here in Houston, one in particular, Monique Lauren. And she's a very beautiful young woman, very talented. Um, I'm playing the part of Monique who is a lab tech that gets tortured and um, abused and has gone through a lot of trauma. And she's trying to redeem um, a, another doctor who is making these drugs that are hurting people. Um, I auditioned for the part about a couple weeks ago. David Cameron, the, the director and writer, actually called me and said, I have a part that I would like for you to audition for. And I was like, David, I'm not acting anymore. <laughs> and I was like, he's like, you have to, you have to go. So I came out and uh, auditioned for the role of Moni. My name happens to be Moni, and got the role. Uh, I've met David about a year ago. He was doing a pilot, and in that particular pilot, he tortured me in that one. And so as we fast forward to today, he did the same thing um, in this particular movie. There is a scene in the movie where I'm standing in the rain, and I didn't see that, unfortunately, in the script. I thought that in that scene we would be behind a window, the rain would be coming down, I'm crying, 
And so it was interesting because I was standing there and I heard this water sprout go off. And I was like, wow, that's an interesting sound, but my back was to it. So I turned around and I was like, wow, how pretty is that? The water's coming down. Then I remember him saying, you're gonna get wet today. And I screamed, David! I cannot believe every time I do something for you, have me tortured. So that's what happened with that particular scene that, um, for the rain where the blue tears are coming down. I'm, I'm sad and hurting and in a, excruciating pain from what has happened. I was thinking, what if this lab had been like the Tuskegee experiment? At one point in the 60s, they were injecting African Americans with syphilis to test vaccines. I hate to disappoint you. Real World War II Auschwitz kind of thing. And what if this had been that place, this lab, and the ghost is still there? And she meets this chemist, and she can save him, because he's going to lose his soul if he makes these drugs. And the, I call the drug Blue Tears, because it's all very sad <laughs> and very tragic. But in the course of developing the story, at the end of the story, there's a happy ending of the souls, where both their souls are saved and joined. And it's just a delightful little piece. And here we are shooting it in Clear Lake. We have a, a hospital, a small hospital working here, which is giving us exactly what we need. Uh, Rick Boyd has put together, uh, the producer has put together a wonderful crew. Uh, Billy McTavish is the DP, very talented. And the, what I really like is not only they're good, they're fast. Uh, that is what I'm used to in TV, TV crews in Los Angeles. The crews are very, very talented, very fast, very professional. I think you got a lot of coverage very quickly. And this is what we're doing here. It's like something in Hollywood. Uh, we need a grove of trees. We ended up finding a private property for that. And we have rain effects out there. And I, it was amazing we got that. We did it so well. And what else has happened? Well, we had a limousine we were booked for a day. And it turned out we only had it for half a day, so we had to rush the whole bunch of scenes very quickly. Uh, I needed extras for a sequence, series of sequences yesterday. And I thought, we, I really didn't think we'd get very many because, you know, it's Saturday, we're not paying anything, we're just feeding people. And the, the hospital's filled with people. <laughs> we suddenly had like, we had like 30 extras over here for two sequences. Uh, uh, some were family and friends, but most people just drove from all sorts of distances. We had one girl for a silent extra, I mean, you know, an extra part, part drove from Dallas. Um, we're in Clear Lake, we're almost to the bay. So we had a lot of people here, which was trying uh, for the hospital, but uh, we all worked it out. J. Eddie Peck, we were very, very lucky. We brought in our lead from Los Angeles. Uh, very, very fortunate because he's so experienced. We actually have worked on a couple of shows together at different times. He worked on Diagnosis Murder, he worked on Murder She Wrote. I worked on those shows as well, just not at the same time. So we know a lot of the same people. And uh, he really does analyze his script, he really works on his script and really puts together his material. He does his homework. A lot of uh, actors, even professional actors, will just, ah, I'll wing it. They get up there and they just kind of wing it. He does not do that. I'm very appreciative of that. He also works very well with the other actors. He really wants to get keyed into the story, the characters, and what they're feeling too. And he's giving me so much more than I expected. Um, so, uh, Blue Tears is, uh, is the ultimate designer drug that the drug cartels have been trying to develop for, you know, for a long time, and, and they're finally on the cusp of uh, coming up with this with this new wonder drug that's going to, you know, take the market and just go crazy with it. And they're really excited about it. The only problem is it comes at a price. Billy McTavish, who has been a filmmaker for 20 some odd years, is our director of photography. He has an absolutely wonderful eye and is doing a fabulous job. I'm the director of photography here on Blue Tears. Um, I've been in the film business for about 20 years now. I've uh, worked my way up the ranks through the grip and electrics department and, uh, and the cameras now. I I'm working with uh, Rick Boyd, who's our producer, and uh, he's a great guy. I, I work with him also at uh, Houston Community College where we teach. 
and uh, we have a really nice uh, working relationship together. And uh, he's acted as my mentor uh, as far as teaching those. I'm also working with uh, David Karen, the director, and uh, David and I have a good relationship too. Obviously, it's uh, it's a lot of fun working with them and, uh, and just putting the film together and stuff. So. Shooting this film in three and a half days is, 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 a, is a fast pace. I mean, we have, uh, what do we have, 13 pages of script. A lot of, a lot of what I do is, is uh, chaos management. <laughs> uh, uh, putting out fires, uh, uh, trying to speed things up, working under the demands of, of the clock ticking down. The, the, hardest, the hardest part is just making the moves and, and trying to keep everything on schedule. Uh, in, in the short amount of time that we had to get it. You know, on a, on a longer feature, you have more time to get more camera angles, better coverage. Um, we, on this one, we were restricted a little bit by our size and by our shooting schedule. By being shorter, we had to move a lot faster, so we had to make a few compromises in, in what we do with our camera and some of the looks that we get, some of the angles that the, we're able to capture. Our, our second unit, uh, because of our time constraints of so three and a half days of shooting, we put together a second camera unit, and, and they've gone out and they've been able to pick up some of the shots that we're not able to capture on with the first unit, such as some driving shots with the car, um, some cutaway angles. Uh, at, at times, we've had to bring them in and, and do two camera angles and do it to be able to get the amount of, of coverage that we need to, to finish the film. Like on a longer uh, scheduled shoot, we get most of that with the A unit. On, on this shoot, in three and a half days, we've, the, the A camera has primarily focused on working with the, with the talent. And it, this has been a great experience, uh, not only for myself, but for the crew. And since we're, a lot of the, the crew that we've been using are, are uh, students from the college. It's, uh, you know, they've, they've really, in the, in the short amount of time as we've, we've worked on this to do this, they've learned more than, you know, like a half semester worth of lectures. Um, Yankee Grant is uh, casting the film and serving as our first assistant director. Uh, once again, she has uh, just really gone above and beyond to help us put this, this uh, project together. I'm working on Blue Tears with David Karen and Rick Boyd um, in Casanova Films, Casanova Island Films. I've um, been working with Rick Boyd through three movies and um, David Karen for about uh, three movies as well. And now I've been moved up to first AD for David Karen. Let me tell you this, there is a solution for every problem that David encounters, we solve it. We have not had a lot of sleep lately. She is the nicest nurse. She's so nervous. She's got somebody else coming in? No, we're fine. We've got plenty, so unless, this too. hold on to it. Okay. okay, we have enough for everybody, correct? Yes. Things that happen on a movie set. And I'm telling you, I have the best assistant right now working for me. Um, on this that they assigned me, and that's Keenan. Nothing compares with the brilliance that is Blue Tears. I'm a class at production. And I really appreciate him. David is, um, David is a great guy. I mean, he is so funny. You no, know, I did a KKK atrocity. She right hung from a tree and she chopped up with a sickle. Oh, oh, this is easy. <laughs> <laughs> the next movie you do better be a chick flick. Huh? The next movie you do better be a chick flick. A chick flick? <laughs> <laughs> I write chick flicks. It's just bad things happen to the chicks. What's the cue for money? Maybe a yell or a scream? Me? Yell from the little girl? <laughs> <laughs> Yes. Imagine how horrible it would have been if she had to take something inside your thigh. Yes! That, that would have been I'm turning the table. Oh, 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 the table there. oh yes. No, I don't do camera. What an imagery. It's like someone being threatened for eating. I don't eat cupcakes. It's like the same passion. I don't drink Coca Cola. Okay. Uh, the character's name is Roxanne, and she runs a drug manufacturing corporation to develop an illegal psychotropic drug and she's very controlling, a little bit sadistic and she's basically got the male lead Douglas right under her thumb. Love David. Um, I thought it was really interesting because during the callback he spent so much time with us, personal time with us, and you don't always get that. You know, sometimes it's kind of like high and by. 
and he spent so much time in really talking about these characters and their backstory and their emotional life and he was much more like a theater director who really kind of gets at the meat and at the heart of things rather than a lot of film directors just want to see if their shot looks pretty. Um, so that really, that really impressed me and excited me about wanting to work on this project because he was so passionate about these people. So, I like Dave. Together. And then, um, in addition to those, uh, and Dan Valdez, I can't forget Dan Valdez, our gaffer, um, very experienced and, and very, very high quality crew member. And then, once we get past those, I, I've got a great group of students from Houston Community College. Um, I teach there, and uh, these, are, these are some of the best students we have, and the quality of their work is evident in their final product. I'm the weapons wrangler. I'm the technical advisor on the drug lab. I am uh, an actor. I am the, I'm a prop, prop semester. I'm playing Felix the uh, head guard at the drug lab. Outlaw biker with an attitude. Yeah. All right. My name is Amelia and I am a rave girl. I will be packaging drugs. Um, I'm actually the craft services person. Uh, Sherry Moberg, I'm script supervisor on this film. Actually, we have a really good crew. A lot of them are students. Some of them haven't worked films uh, very often. Some of them have worked quite a few films and um, they're all working very hard. And I'm I'm proud to be a part of this crew. This is my first time on an actual uh, movie set. Yeah, outside of the classroom, it's my first hands-on experience. I'm really enjoying, really enjoying and learning a whole lot. You can really see how well they've done. And uh, so it, it looks really good and I'm really pleased. Um, it takes a lot of people to do this. And, um, it's, it's really an amazing thing to see everybody come together and make a film work the way this works. New Dr. Molliver, the, uh, the gentleman, the doctor that owns the clinic where we're shooting, uh, he graciously agreed to let us come in and, and use his clinic. Well, I'm Dr. Clayton Molliver, and this is my building and my surgery center. I'm a plastic surgeon, and uh, a lady I know who's a nurse I worked with years ago at one of the hospitals here, and then uh, became my patient, called me and said, Dr. Molliver, I have some friends that are shooting a movie and we need a medical scene, we need a medical facility. Would you allow us to film at your facility? And of course I said, sure, sounds like fun. And, and that's how it all started. And I'm in the movie, so it's been a lot of fun. Karen, he seems like a really nice fellow, really nice fellow. I like, you can see the artistic flair, the, the uh, gears are turning all the time. It's a, I, I think the story is changing just a little bit as he goes constantly. So uh, we had fun today, though. I, I don't think he expected me to come out with the breast implants in the middle of this set. Pathetic! You know, I'm really a Shut up! Nurse, you'd be happier if you had breast implants. <laughs> <laughs> you know I'm, that I'm he really can't think surgeon. when you're crying. He may put breast implants in you. But I'm a plastic surgeon, and if I put breast implants on you, you'll be happier. Cut! <laughs> Location. <laughs> I'm in another movie. <laughs> I'm in Breast Man. That's the movie we need to be making. Where's my own one? Jasmine? It's a cut. That's our chick flick. <laughs> oh, let's move on. Let's take one. Print it. Make up or make up. <laughs> <laughs> uh, and it's been a wonderful set. It's it's really been a wonderful situation for us. The most important skill that I need to have, um, oh gosh, it's kind of equal parts of patience and uh, diplomacy and um, just uh, being able to provide a, a creative, a cohesive creative vision for everybody. Um, I mean, sometimes it's a matter of, you know, getting up and going and getting drinks for the director, uh, and sometimes it's a matter of, of uh, negotiating at the last minute with the doctor to get his office. Uh, you know, it could be a lot of different things, especially in a low budget film. The producer ends up doing a lot of th stuff that yeah, you wouldn't expect you know, 
for instance, Steven Spielberg to do. I mean, he's got he hires people to do that. Well, we don't hire people; we do it ourselves. So, um, probably the most important skill is flexibility. Just being able and willing to do a lot of different things to in the cause of getting a film made. Especially want to credit. Um, our behind-the-scenes video person, Janice Wortham, has just done an absolutely phenomenal job, and uh, I can't can't help but give her a bunch of kudos for that. MTV Market.